My First Bible presents... The Promise of Jephthah. Wait, wait! Before starting the story, we should present a summary about what happened with Gideon. Mm -hmm. Okay. Go get ready, come on! Gideon and his 300 men kept on searching for the Midianites who had escaped. They were after the two kings of Midian, Zeba and Zalmanna. Tired of the persecution, they arrived at Sukkot, and Gideon asked the officers to give bread to his exhausted soldiers. However, the Sukkot officers refused, saying, Ha! Huh, have they already captured Zeba and Zalmunna? Why should we give bread to your soldiers? Gideon answered, All right, when the Lord gives me Zeba and Zalmunna, you will die! From there, they went up to Peniel, and Gideon asked for the same thing. But those from Peniel gave the same answer. That is why he warned those men. When I return victorious, I will tear down his tower. When the kings of Midian were finally captured, Gideon punished the men who mocked and refused to help them. After the victory over the Midianites, the Israelites asked Gideon to rule over them. However, Gideon rejected the offer, but asked each of them to give him a ring from their share of the spoils of the battle. And with these rings, he made an ephod, a priestly garment, and placed it in his hometown, Ophrah. However, all of Israel began to worship the ephod, which became a trap for Gideon and his family. For 40 years while Gideon lived, Israel was at peace. He died at a very old age and was buried in Ophrah with his father, Joash. Gideon had 70 sons, for he had many wives. One of his sons was called Abimelech, and he was very ambitious. He wanted to rule the city of Shechem. So he hired some unscrupulous thugs and murdered all his brothers so that there would be no more candidates to govern Israel. But there was one brother, the younger, named Jotham, who managed to hide and escape. Jotham warned the inhabitants of Shechem that if they chose Abimelech as their leader, it could lead to destruction and conflict. And so it happened, Abimelech had already ruled Israel for three years when God placed an evil spirit between Abimelech and the inhabitants of Shechem who rebelled against him. This was for having killed Gideon's sons. Abimelech learned that the inhabitants fled to a strong tower and locked themselves there. He approached the tower to attack it. But as he approached the entrance to set it on fire, a woman threw a grinding stone on his head and broke his skull. Immediately, Abimelech called his armor bearer and ordered, Take out your sword and kill me so that they don't say to me that a woman has killed me. Then his squire drove the sword and he died. This is how God punished Abimelech for the crime he had committed against his father by killing his 70 brothers. Subscribe and comment! It's a joke! Jephthah's Promise after a long time, there once was a warrior from the region of Galad, named Jephthah, who was the son of Gilead and a harlot. Gilead also had children with his wife, who when they grew up, drove out Jephthah. You will not have part of our family's inheritance, they said, because you are the son of another woman, of a harlot. But I also have the right to inheritance. I am a son of Gilead, even though I am not from the same mother as you. You don't belong here! I do! No, you don't. Why? 
You are not part of the family! We are brothers! Half-brothers! I deserve a part of the inheritance! Stop, Jephthah! Hmm. You are not a legit heir! Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then, Jephthah mm -hmm. fled from his brothers mm -hmm. and went to live in the region of Tob, where he met some malicious men, who went out with him to commit misdeeds. The Israelites again did evil in the eyes of the Lord. Again? They worshipped the Baals and gods of other regions and forgot Jehovah. This angered the Lord, and he allowed them to fall under the rule of the Ammonites and Philistines, who cruelly oppressed the Israelites for 18 years. They destroyed and oppressed all the Israelites who lived in Gilead. They also crossed the river to fight against the tribes of Judah, Benjamin, and Ephraim. The Israelites found themselves in a situation of extreme distress. Then they cried out to the Lord. Save us, Lord! We have sinned against you by forsaking our God and worshipping the idols of Baal! The Lord answered, you were oppressed by several nations. You cried to me to help you. Did I not free you from them? But you have abandoned me and have worshipped other gods. Therefore, I will not save you again. Go and cry to the gods you have chosen. May they free you from your affliction. But the Israelites replied, We have sinned. Do with us what you see fit, but we beg you, please, may you save us! Then the Israelites got rid of the foreign gods among them and worshipped the Lord. The Lord, in his mercy, could no longer bear the suffering of Israel. When the Ammonites camped in Gilead, the Israelites gathered and camped in Mizpah. The leaders and the people of Gilead said to each other, Whoever starts the attack against the Ammonites will be the leader of all those who live in Gilead. After some time, the elders of Gilead went to bring Jephthah from the land of Tob. What brings you here? Jephthah asked. We have come to ask you to lead our army against the Ammonites. In the name of all Israelites, we ask you to help us. Hmm? Weren't you the ones who hated me and threw me out of my father's house? Why do they come to see me now when they are in trouble? The elders replied, That's why we come to see you now. Come with us to fight against the Ammonites, and you will be the leader of all who live in Gilead. If the Lord hands me over to the Ammonites, then I will be your leader? The Lord is our witness. We shall do as you say. Jephthah went to the elders of Gilead, and the people made him their leader and commander. Then Jephthah sent messages to the king of the Ammonites, asking, what do you have against me, that you have come to wage war on my country? The king of the Ammonites answered, When the Israelites left Egypt, they took possession of my land from the Aaron to Jebek, even to Jordan. Now give it back the good way. Jephthah sent messages to the Ammonite king again, explaining the entire route and the lands that Israel had taken since they left Egypt. However, the king of the Ammonites did not pay attention to the message that Jephthah sent him. Hmm. Then, Jephthah, filled with the Spirit of the Lord, traveled through Gilead and Manasseh, passed through Mizpah Gilead, and from there, advanced against the Ammonites. At that moment, Jephthah made a solemn promise to the Lord. If you truly deliver the Ammonites into my hands, when I return after having defeated the Ammonites, whoever comes out first from the door of my house to meet me, 
will be yours, Lord, and I will offer him to you as a burnt offering. And so, Jephthah went to the Ammonites to fight against them. And the Lord delivered them into his hands, defeating 20 cities. The defeat was very great. Sorry, sorry. Cut, cut, that part was not supposed to be here! Blah, blah, blah. Thus, the Ammonites ah, remained subjected yeah. to the Israelites. When Jephthah finally returned to his home in Mizpah, he was very proud as he headed home. And suddenly, his daughter came out to greet him, dancing to the sound of the tambourines. She was an only child, since Jephthah had no other children. When Jephthah saw her, he remembered the promise he made to God, to give him the first person who comes out to receive him. So, he tore his clothes and cried. Oh, my daughter, you have completely destroyed me. You are the cause of my misfortune. I promised the Lord something and I can't take it back. Jephthah told his daughter what the promise was. My father, she responded, you have given your word to the Lord. Do with me according to your oath since the Lord has given you the Ammonites into your hands. But grant me this one request. She added, Since I will never get married, give me two months to retire to the mountains and cry there with my friends. It's okay, my daughter. You can go. He replied, and he allowed her to leave for two months. She and her friends went to the mountains, and she cried because she would never get married. After two months, she returned to her father, and he did with her according to his promise. Therefore, it is important to think carefully before making a promise. An impulsive decision can have significant consequences and affect those we love, just like Jephthah's promise. Now you are ready to subscribe, comment, like, and follow us on our social media. We will greet our friends who have commented on our post. If you want a greeting in the next video, follow us and comment on the latest posts on our networks, Instagram and YouTube. The next greetings go to Tinashe and Fatima, South America, Asher of South Africa, Karen Willoughby, Danielle from Cameron, USA, Enkoma Yearwood of Guyana, Gabriel. Azevion, Midnight, Jose Caballero, Trust Without Borders, Reina Jimenez, USA, Life with Taisha, Chauncey Reed, Mount Never Stop, Chris Molina, Timothy from Philippines, Cat, Chauncey Reed, Steve from USA, Angelica Oliveira Vicente, Ungari. Thank you very much for all your great support.